Hi folks, Roach here. It is uh, July 10th, uh, 2019. This uh, talk uh, is going to be titled Farce of Will, and you'll understand you know, why I say that uh, as we get into it. We have some folks uh, um, in, the dis in the discussion with me, and uh, uh, if they'd like to introduce themselves, they're free to, or they could just simply remain anonymous. Uh, that's okay, too. Uh, so anybody who wants to introduce themselves, go, go ahead. Yeah, Dave here. Hey, everybody. Hey, Dave. Lori here. All right. And Bearpaw, I heard him. Uh, Truth Seekers on the sidelines and uh, the lovely Beebles is, is listening in also, but uh, they got their mics muted. So um, in this video, uh, Farce of Will, uh, and, and just, uh, just some... Um, stuff out there folks if any of this stuff is really helping you and you want to uh, help or contribute just visit my uh, uh, website roach.com there's a donation button uh, any help that you can give us uh, uh, w uh, is appreciated uh, so um, that you'll also find some other information there and um, you, you know if, if the videos help uh, let you know just let us know and uh, if you can help you know share the videos uh, share the videos talk to the uh, talk to people um, you know and join us here tonight um, uh, I'm going to be doing this Wednesday nights and if you want to be part of it uh, you know uh, hit me up and we'll get you a link uh, if you want to join uh, join us on the Discord, uh, the Sequitur uh, Discord server, uh, we will uh, uh, be happy to have you. So let's let's get into it. Okay, so um, I'm going to make reference because um, here this last week, there's been a lot of people in the on the Sequitur server in the main in, in the main sharing text uh, room that have been all having similar experiences. Uh, they've been experiencing a lot of synchronicities and some of the stuff that I'm seeing, uh, well, you know, synchronicities are normal when you're paying attention, uh, but some of the other stuff is uh, sort of, uh, it hints at, uh, let's just say, not fully comprehending what's in the cheat sheet mark f uh, five. Um, and, and it's actually a pretty important one. Um, and it, it is the concept of uh, force of will, of uh, uh, of our capacity to you know create our, our reality or transform our reality, and that can be a problem um, because it's at variance with the new model. Um, that is an egoic way of looking at stuff. Um, in, in the cheat sheet, I, I, I basically say, um, you know, ego has to realize that uh, it's not a matter of him giving up control. He has to realize that he never had control in the first place. And uh, more importantly, he has to realize who, do, who is in control. And one of the biggest things, one of the things that uh, uh, people don't realize is we have at most here the illusion of control. Okay, it is an illusion. Uh, it is it is a function of how the simulation presents things, and it is the basic nature of ego itself. Uh, he creates the illusion that what you're doing is spontaneous, that what you're doing is a, a function of your force of will. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, and I use the metaphor, um, the metaphor I, I usually use for that is um, who you are is you're the guy sitting on the couch inside the control room and you're looking out through the windshield of this flesh robot uh, through the windshield called the eyes. Okay, and you're sitting on the couch, and there's a joystick in front of you. Now, you can reach out and grab the joystick, and if you move it right, then the flesh robot turns right. If you move it left, the flesh robot turns left. Uh, and that's so, so we think that by us moving the joystick, that, that we're actually controlling what, what, what the uh, uh, flesh robot is actually doing. Um, what we need to realize is that joystick is not connected to anything. 
Um, and it it actually relates to um, it relates to um, uh, quantum mechanics. And and one of the things that they've noticed in quantum mechanics is often the effect precedes its cause meaning that you will see effects manifest in reality uh, before its underlying cause. Now, this has really puzzled them because it, it pretty much puts a fork in time. Now, if you, if you understand what ego does, ego is the universe suit that you're wearing. Um, and if, you know, effects are preceding the cause, that means there are consequences before the actual uh, event that triggered them, okay? And uh, it, that's the base function of ego, okay? In order to create a, uh, the illusion that the static DVD that you're going through right now is is spontaneous and is all, all you doing it uh, to, to make life interesting what one of egos functions is to create the illusion that okay you thought of it you made the decision and so now you're going to uh, now you, you've done it because one you've moved your finger okay so so okay I'm gonna I want to move my finger so now I think about moving my finger and now I move my finger okay now if if effects precedes their cause, and if they've noticed this in quantum mechanics, what does that mean? That means the effect is that you move your finger, right? And ego then creates the illusion that it was your idea and that it was your will and your decision and your choice that actually made your finger move. That's, that's the beauty of ego. So what does that bring to you? Okay, well, what that brings to you is when we come here to experience in the flesh uh, suit and the universe suit that we put on, then when we put that suit on, uh, it, it's basically a DVD, okay? And, and I would imagine you didn't get into anything that you didn't know beforehand, so uh, you decided that, you know, th I, I put on the road suit. Okay, so I'm I'm watching the Roge movie, and, and the movie was already filmed. It's in the can, as Henry St Harry Dean Stanton always said. Uh, it's in the can, meaning that this story has already been filmed, and, and what you're doing is you're viewing it. Well, that'd be kind of boring, uh, for two reasons. Um, you know, if you've seen it before and you know every aspect of the movie, then why even watch it? Right, so one of the one of the interesting things about the universe suit is you you forget who you are, you forget that you're even in the movie, even if you've watched this countless times. Uh, every time you go through it, it appears new. Okay, so uh, the other thing that the you know the other aspect of this is what ego does. Um, you know, and and you know, if you're just sitting there, uh, if you're just sitting there passively observing um, a, a DVD, then there's really no participation. Uh, so, uh, as far as it bringing experience to you, um, it's it, it appears like you're just a spectator. Like you're in the audience and you can just nod off, look away, or do, or do everything. But what ego does is it creates the illusion that you're actually the character in the screen and that you're actually making the decisions and you're actually writing the story as you go. Okay? Now, that's not a very safe place to exist uh, because, wow, uh, you might be subject to luck, chance, and accident. Uh, because uh, you know, if you think that this is all spontaneous and, and 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 this is all a function of luck, chance, and accident, then you know bad things could happen to you for for you know for whatever reason. Uh, there's no safety there. Um, that's not an existence where you know, I mean you I mean you're always looking around the corner. Oh, what 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 could happen next? Oh my gosh, what could happen next? 
you know or you know for instance if if you say you know those people that that say out there hey well you know i'm in control here and i'm actually manifesting my reality all right so there's been a resurgence of the uh, something called law of attraction and i say resurgence because that principle is old uh, th that's just an old concept and what they've done is they've repackaged it and called it law of attraction now odd thing is there's as many books out there uh, that t teach you how to use law of attraction as there are books out there that tells you why it's not working for you okay uh, and uh, in my mind, it's just a repackaging of, uh, you know, just voodoo or black magic. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've been in these groups where these people, they sit around and, you know, I, uh, there's no judgment here, but they sit around and they're all intending, right? Because they want to bring about positive consequences and they want to manifest something in their reality. Um and, and so they sit around in a circle and they offer up these intentions and you know it all sounds good and they, and, and it makes it makes you feel real good and and and, and l largely you sit around waiting for that stuff to happen um, if if it needs to happen to you it's going to happen to you whether you want it to happen or not uh, if it's not supposed to happen there's nothing that you're going to do to make that happen OK, uh, so, uh, you know, what I tell people is just simply relax and enjoy the show. Why? Because the joystick inside the flesh robot isn't connected. OK, it, it, it's not connected. Now, you, you uh, uh, ego will create the illusion that it is. But, you know, shoot, this uh, my flesh suit is, is perfectly capable of speaking without thinking about what it is it needs to say. Uh, and it's uh, quite capable of going through its life without me, you know, forcibly uh, trying to make things happen. I mean, you know, for instance, right now I'm, I'm making these little toys. I call I call them wing things, and they're like little flying bats and little flying butterflies that kids can can play with. And I, I've been selling them at the farmers market. Now, if you would have asked me a month uh, a month and a half ago, hey, uh, uh, are you know, are you going to be selling toys? Um, I, I would have told you no. Uh, I mean, or um, I would have said, you know, I, I really don't know. I, I mean, it was just something that was visited on me, and it just unfolded all on its own. And it, it seemed fairly, uh, uh, you know, it, it really took very little effort at all, you know. And, and, and it wasn't that... Um, you know, we were at the farmer's market and, you know, we were selling plants and microgreens and, and it, it was just not, the, they just weren't products that these people wanted to buy. So he, here I was I, and I'm thinking, wow, we need, we need more stuff to sell here. Okay. So in, in, instead of just sitting down and, and going, hmm. Uh, what can I sell? What can I sell? What can I sell? I mean, and that is attempting to approach the solution uh, uh, to the problem by applying thought, okay, by thinking to a solution. Uh, I instead, I, I do what I always do is I relied on intuition. And so what did that mean? So all I did was immerse myself completely in the, uh, in the farmer's market experience and just pay attention to what was going on. And one of the things that I noticed was a lot of the kids were bored. Uh, there is a little playground there, but, you know, they walk around with the adults, but uh, there's really not a whole lot for them to do. Uh, and I thought, hmm, that's, a, that's odd. I mean, they look kind of bored. Now, uh, did I go over there and, and entertain the kids? I, you know, it wasn't my choice. I mean, the kids started talking to me, and, um, you know, that was it. I, I, I just wanted to make sure. Now, was I worried that we weren't making uh, the kind of sales at the farmer's market? Oh, well, you know, there was a concern there. But that didn't keep me from doing, uh, fulfilling my primary function, and that is observing every aspect in the immediate moment as as much as I possibly could. So, uh, you know, I, you know, and there were several days. We lost where, you. Oh, how about now? Can you hear me?
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Am I still gone? How about now? Oh. Come in, Roger. Andrew. How about now? Can you hear me now? There you yes. go. Okay. Well, sorry about that. Uh, wh 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 where did I uh, where did I uh, uh, stop? I was talking about uh, I, I was talking about uh, fo um, meeting my uh, my initial reaction. You know, my uh, initial duty was to observe, right? And instead of actually worrying about, hey, we don't have a product to sell at the market. So, so what I did is, you know, I, I just paid attention and, you know, I, I immersed myself in there and watched that the kids didn't have anything to do. And um, maybe about a day later, all of a sudden, I, I, I thought, wow. Uh, and, and, and it was one of those things where I, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I had a butterfly on my hand? You know, and then I thought back at the time we put the tank in in the back where a butterfly landed on me, and I thought, well, that's kind of cool to actually have a butterfly on your hand. And I and, and then that was the idea that came, a uh, butterfly on the hand. Of course, once the inspiration came, that comes from yin or the self, then ego can, once you get the inspira uh, inspiration, that comes from divine inspiration, then ego kicks in and actually makes that manifest, okay? So that's the whole Pharaoh's noose, right? You have Pharaoh, he's the manifester, that's ego. But then you have two women behind him with, the, with their hands held up, to, and get receiving the divine information, right? So w w when they talk about Pharaoh, th there's a two-part component. Well, unfortunately, pasty white guys that went to uh, to Egypt didn't realize that the two women standing behind Pharaoh were actually pretty important because they're the ones that were receiving the divine inspiration. They were the ones that were receiving the purpose and the reason. And, of course, Pharaoh, then uh, his job was to make that manifest, Okay, so in the same way, I'm, I'm sitting here and th this thing came down. Wouldn't it be nice to have uh, a butterfly on my finger? And I thought, well, yeah, that'd be great. And I says, and, and then, it, you know, you know, and, and the thought was that it, it would flap its wings. And I, and at which point then I says, wow, uh, what would it take uh, for me to make that happen? And then all of a sudden automatically everything fell into place and then you know like a week later i've got uh you know a real rudimentary prototype on how to do that uh on how to you know make these little flying creatures uh fly uh and and when i went out there i mean the kids really really like it and i've been really selling it so uh but the idea was did I have to think to the solution? Well, no, that solution was already available, and I didn't have to put any effort except just simply pay attention to what it was that I was doing. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the puppet suit, it, you know, the flesh suit, it, it dances around, it does its own things, and, and I just, you know, I, I just pay attention to the dance uh, i mean i watch him dance i watch what uh, occurs in my experience uh the flesh suit talks it interacts with people it, it, it's actually speaking to you right now uh, what am i doing well i'm inside just watching what the flesh suit is doing um, that's that's what's occurring um am i trying to control the situation no no i, I i'm not it, it may appear that way uh, if you're watching the suit, and you say, well, you made this choice, you did this, and you did this, and you did this. And, and really, those choices were already made. Um, and, you know, 
the illusion is that you think that you're making the choices. You think that you're creating your reality, and, and, and really that you're, you're really not. Uh, you know, and and if you don't believe me, I mean, the more you plan, uh, the harder it is to keep to that plan. Um, the, the, the more you try to, the more you try to control your environment, uh, the less control you're going to see that you have. Now, for you folks that are seeing all of these synchronicities, that's part of the process, okay? That losing of control, that realizing that you don't have control is part of the process. Uh, why synchronicities? Well, synchronicities give you an indication that, wait a minute, there's more going on here than just simply me doing what it is that I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm seeing things that are, that are you know, uh, beyond coincidental, beyond chance, that are uh, 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 in incredibly relevant and in incredibly appropriate and personal that are that is happening to me over and over and over again and what is it well it's the self attempting to break through and communicate with with the the ego um in 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 his experience and and it manifests these things on its own uh, uh as you know as reality uh, and it talks to you through that reality, through symbols, through events, and the things that occur in your life. Okay, so uh, if you if it were a matter of hey, you know, this is my choice, it's just like when these synchronicities occur, you, you can't ignore them. Um, you can't decide that you're not going to recognize them. You recognize them. You recognize them because, wow, you don't have a choice to look away from these things. And once you start noticing these things, then then things start uh, improving. So there there was uh, there was a particular incident where somebody was actually concerned that they were uh, uh, that they were in a state of anger, and that anger. Uh, uh, that anger uh, all of a sudden manifested as as a, you know a a natural weather phenomenon uh and, and created a lot of damage and the idea was i i could see uh, I, I could see where uh, well the question was uh, do my thoughts uh in ego can can it create bad situations like that um well no um that's not the way that's not what's going on here um ego is all one thing the entire universe that whole thing that you're in the uni your whole universe is all one thing um the tornado uh and and the experience of being angry is, is all just part of ego okay that that's what it does uh our, if you think that hey i'm causing that then then ego is is luring you into a trap if you want to think that way that's fine uh but there's no safety in that universe uh because it, it, with respect to like law of attraction um you know here i am sitting in this room with all these people like oming and awing and and i'm not trying to make fun of people that that do these sorts of things mind you but you know they 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 were doing ohms and you know they they prepared and then you know they 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 cleaned the room and there's nothing wrong with that i mean that's that's called just mental discipline um and, and then and then what they did is each one would contribute what their you know that week's intention was and what they wanted and and a lot of it was were were platitudes and and a lot of some of it was actually you know pretty meaningful uh but these are things that that you wanted to make manifest and they thought well you know the more we intend and the more we're together on this the more we can make that happen well it not, doesn't happen for those folks uh, but they keep trying um, it, it's technically black magic uh, I mean if you think that you know certain incantations or uh, or or certain ego desire is going to make something manifest um, ego ego can uh, can make things manifest but usually it's a thought prov uh, it's a you know these these solutions that ego provides are, are based out of thought not inspiration and when it when it comes down uh, it largely creates more 
problems than than uh, uh, than it solves. Like for instance, I mean, there's people that will sit there and pray and pray and pray for a Maserati, and they think that the Maserati is is what they need. Uh, they don't need a Maserati. Uh, they need the tree. Uh, two weeks later, that that Maserati runs into. Uh, why? Because I, I mean, a Maserati is not, uh, you know, it's not a family uh, a family automobile. I mean, these things they're they're, they're much more complex to control. It takes an amount of skill to drive the things without killing yourself, you know. So yeah, it might be nice to have something uh, super fast, uh, but for most people, that's that's a want. That's not a need. Okay, and, and a lot of it is born out of vanity. Meaning that, oh well, you know, oh if I if I just had a if I just had a Maserati, uh, then wow, everybody else in the neighborhood would look at me, you know. So I mean, that's that's something born out of uh, vanity and pride, and that's not something that one needs. Uh, if you have a job and and you need to move yourself from one place to another, uh, you know, shoot the Honda Civic will work just fine. I'm dating myself, of course. Um, but uh, I mean, a, a a functional automobile that can do that, or not only that, but uh, I, I mean, a, a friend just happens to be going there, and and you can hitch a ride. Um, you know, if the objective is that that in the in the part of the story where it, it's morning and you have to go, uh, that there is a need for you to go to your job, then 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 something will uh, or uh, something will happen that'll make that happen. Uh, if if you're not supposed to be at your job that morning, then then you, you your car won't start, or uh, or you know, your friend can't uh, can't give you a ride, or the you know Uber goes down, or you know a whole host of things. Um, but separating that want from the need is actually pretty important. Um, when your needs are aligned with your wants, then merely wanting something egoically brings brings you what you need. Okay, so as, as you go through the process, you'll find that your wants change and your priorities change, so that now all of a sudden you're wanting what you need, and vice versa. Uh, Lori, ha ha have you seen that occur in your experience? Yes, here and there, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it takes a while because uh, your priorities get get reshuffled. I, I mean, and you know, for instance, uh, uh, like you know, folks that have like weight problems and stuff like that. You know, as you go through the process, things then start start showing up. Like all of a sudden, you start looking at ingredients. Well, why? Well, our our pro our weight problems a, a lot of the times don't have much to do with how much we eat. Uh, it has everything to do with what we eat. Now, I mean, nobody has, nobody starts out saying, hey, I want to eat sticks and twigs or, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, there's a lot of health food out there, just not that tasty. Uh, it's it's good for you. It's healthy, uh, but you, you don't have an appetite for it. But as you go through the process, you'll find that all of a sudden you'll start developing appetites. And then not only that, but certain things that you used to eat, they used to call comfort food, is just not that comfortable anymore. Uh, so you know, as 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 you you know, go through the process, you know, uh, certain things happen. One, your health improves uh, because you start actually applying, you start paying attention to your uh, uh, your simulation, what's going on in your reality, and it starts giving you clues as to those kinds of things that you're, uh, that you're doing uh, that, that, that are creating negative consequences for you, like what you're eating, you know, like, uh, uh, like, you know, GMO corn, um, what it does is kill the flora in your intestines. Uh, well, I, I mean, unfortunately, corn is uh, is one of the main food products. I mean, it's in everything, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it's creating a lot of problems for us. But hey, uh, we like corn. We eat corn, and 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 you know that's a problem. But as as you go through the process, you'll find out. Well, you know, I'm not liking corn as much. I'm gonna see. Uh, I got a. I got a. I gotta, uh, you know, I, I have a taste for something else, and, and, and that's and that's what it is. So you you stop wanting the Maserati, and you start saying, "Well, do I really need 
the Maserati, and I says, wow, do I really need a job where I have to drive across town? Um, you know, we, all of the, your priorities start start to get reshuffled, and everything's, you know, everything changes that way. But <coughs> if, if you want to hold to the fact that you have a force of will, and that you're controlling what's going on in in, in, in your reality, um, then you're going to have trouble assimilating the model that's described in the cheat sheet mark five because that's not the model that the 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 cheat sheet actually uh, uh relates okay uh the the model that typical model that people use is is a probabilistic model it's based on luck chance accident and chaos um on, on, on one, uh, you know, and and in that, I, I find it kind of kind of odd that you'll go and you know I'll be at a convenience store, uh, and then you know something will happen. I'll say, hey, uh, nothing. Uh, I said everything happens for a reason, and you know, of course, the lady behind the counter says, yeah. And he says, I'll. Uh, he says, yeah, that's what I believe too. And then she says, uh, did you want a lottery ticket? So she might think, right? She she might say, yeah, everything happens for a reason because there were times in her life where it seemed that there were reasons for things happening in her events, but she hadn't she hasn't internalized it. Why? Because she's she's she believes in luck, chance, and an accident. And and quite frankly, uh, I I don't really know why I would need to win the lottery anyway. Um, I I don't know what it really bring me uh besides a headache um so um you know if i need to win the lottery then really um that's going to happen regardless uh, uh uh you know regardless uh, uh of whether i want it to happen or not um m with with the way things work for me uh i mean quite frankly we have a better chance of getting struck by lightning twice uh, than than winning the lottery. I mean, people need to realize that that the lottery isn't about uh, uh, you know uh, ha having a quote unquote um, a chance at winning. You know that that's not what that is. Uh, it, it is it is to create. Uh, it, it's something the ego uses to create discomfort. Right, because uh, ego likes to deal in scarcity. Uh, it likes to create scarcity. It likes to create uh, lack. Uh, it creates this kind of suffering. Why? Because you know it, it's how he motivates you, um, and and it, it's how he tells the story more accurately. Uh, with respect to motivating you, I mean, uh, he he always baits the trap with savory bait, right? So it looks real good, and as soon as you reach out and and grab it, then then it just doesn't turn out the way it's uh, way you thought. Um, so this idea that oh wait a minute, uh, I had a bad thought and I caused bad things to happen. Well, yeah, yeah, you did. Um, in fact, you're you you who you truly are. It caused the entire universe. Uh, however, as you're viewing that created universe. You're viewing it through an egoic suit, an egoic, uh, 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 you know, manifestation, and that egoic character does not have control over what unfolds in that universe. Okay, it, it, it he, he's. He, he, he's not a participant. He's an NPC. And that was something else. Somebody else uh, uh, made a reference to non-playing characters. There, there's everything is a non-playing character. Everything outside of you is an illusion. So when, when you say, oh, well, these people, oh, well, they have a soul and they're actually really participating. But those other people are not. They're, they're non-playing characters. They don't have a soul. Uh, are, are you kidding? Everything that's going out going on outside is, is an illusion oh who you are is is inside okay so you have an inner universe and you're there the true you the self and everything that you see outside of you is a reflection it's an illusion it's not really there in a, in a, in a real sense and one could argue that the inner universe itself is not really there uh what what do we have here well we have a very highly organized thought 
um, that's what we have. That's what we're dealing with. Uh, I mean, w- no, you don't have a body. No, they don't have a body either. So everything you see out there is soulless. Why? Because the soul is inside. It's not outside. And the other people are an illusion. It's all you. Everything you see is a reflection of you. It is not you. So the idea that, hey, wait a minute, I'm causing bad things to happen, you you can do that in a probabilistic model of the universe. But the cheat sheet Mark V doesn't relate a probabilistic model of the universe. It relates a deterministic model of the universe. And in that, luck, chance, and accident doesn't occur. So if if a particular weather phenomenon needed to happen and you needed to uh, feel like you were the cause of it, then that's what happens. But that has always happened. It has happened happened before and it'll happen again over and over and over again uh, an infinite number of times. So, you know, that and, and, and this getting past this this idea that hey wait a minute i make choices i have control um that's the process that that we're going through and that is the change one of the major changes that we go through as we go through this process is we realize oh, wait a minute i'm just happy to be here you know i i'm watching i'm watching a roge experience right now uh, the the road suit is doing this and doing that and doing this, and I'm watching this. Uh, am I? Uh, the road suit believes that it's making that decision, but it's really not. Uh, this is just part of the road DVD, which was filmed a long time ago, and now uh, uh, now I'm just simply took it out off of the shelf, opened the DVD case, popped it into the into the player, and now I'm watching it. Um, and uh, you know the the, the DVD uh, as as we play it here in the universe is kind of cool because it makes it look like it's actually spontaneous, but this is just the part of the show uh, where where this particular thing needed to happen. So uh, I mean, there's no such thing as uh, you know a spontaneous action. Uh, it appears spontaneous, but that was just a part in the show that was uh, written. Uh, to make it appear uh, spontaneous, and, and, and that's all it is. And and and, and when you when you when you sit and relax, and and you just simply enjoy the show, you don't have any. Uh, I mean, uh, and you just simply look at it as a function of hey, you know, uh, a number of surprises are unfolding, and and you 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 stop trying to control it because you know, look. It, 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 your story is much more interesting when you're not controlling it. Does, does that make sense? Have, have, have I been clear enough on, on, on this? Is everybody understanding it? Truth seeker, are you getting it? Okay, yeah. Truth, truth seeker says thought is energy and can be manifest on your behalf. But you're not the one doing it. Well, ego is not the one doing it. Technically, yes, we are the one doing it, but ego is not. And unfortunately, when we're in the universe, then that's ego. Um, so that that's 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 yeah, that's um, so with that, then truth seeker. I mean, now you just simply need to apply that to to some of the things that you've posted on on the main thread. And, and 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 work through that because you know hey uh no you're not causing bad things to happen uh you know those those bad things were just part of the script and, and that's the way it happened and though the interesting aspect of the script was it was written in such that you uh actually got the impression that you actually caused it so that was just part of the script too <laughs> does that make sense Oh, okay. True Seeker says I have another question. It's slight. It's slightly going back to an old topic. Yeah, but uh, okay. Um, I I'm all for that. Just make it brief. A while back, I mentioned an encounter. Uh, I encountered Lilith or Lucifer, and it wanted to kill me. I remember. I remember someone. Don't remember if it was you or the other who was there with you on the phone 
but once told me, uh, let her kill you, you'll be fine. Uh, can you clarify by what you meant by this, uh, if you can recall? Yeah, I probably said, yeah, just go ahead and let her kill you. Uh, one thing, truth seeker, that you're going to have to realize is that you're not in control of it, and neither is Lilith. Okay, uh, the truth seeker video is going to be the truth seeker video. If you need to die, then then at, a, at an appropriate time, then you will die. Um, I I don't think I'd really be too concerned about Lilith coming to kill you. Uh, you're a darn sight more useful doing other things. And quite frankly, going through exactly what it is you're going through right now is much more important than uh, Lilith killing you. So it's it just one of those things you got to look at uh, look at it as a function of need. Uh, I don't I don't uh, conclude that that you need to die or whether it is that you die or not is really not up to me and it's really not up to whether I think you you need to live or or, or not live uh, the whole thing is is you gotta understand that you're a being that exists in eternity uh, that's you in unity you are the guy the big guy and uh, you have no beginning and you have no end so the whole idea of Lilith itself is just part of the show uh, it, it's part of the thought process. It's it, it's not it, it's not possible. Um, you have to look beyond your 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 impression of how time works. Okay, uh, everything that ever happens happens right now. Uh, I mean, this is eternity. You're gazing at eternity. Uh, from our perception, our, our perception gives us the idea that it's a it's a series of moments or snapshots, one right after the other, and that's how time progresses. But that's not really what's happening. Um, that's how our that you know that's how the simulation is presented. But that's not actually what's going on. So you don't need to really worry about a uh, Lilith. Um, uh, whether or not you had a vision that that was going to happen or not, um, a lot of the time visions are uh, are you know create things that are intentionally the opposite of what is actually occurring, um, and and you know and other times it, it, they can be helpful as far as an educational experience. But I, I wouldn't really be too concerned with Lilith coming to kill you. Um, Unless you're using Lilith as a metaphor for something else um, or someone else, um, then I would say, you know, you just go ahead and pitch the whole Lilith thing and, and actually look at, uh, you know, if there's somebody in your environment that's actually causing you problems. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> If there's uh, somebody actually causing your problems, and 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 you, it, it could be that you're using this particular metaphor to uh, to handle something that's been repressed, and and the symbol keeps coming up. Why? Because it's pointing to something that ha occurred in your past that you haven't yet dealt with properly. All right, and. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with questions right now. Anybody got any questions? I'm I'm, I'm watching the sharing text. So those those folks that that don't have microphones, you can you you can post a short question on there and I can answer it. Or if you guys have a comment or anything, uh, you know, feel free. Um, you know, bear paws. Is this is this helping you? Yeah, it is, man. I understand this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how about David Andrew? Are you, uh, you you getting it? Yeah, I'm getting it. Yeah. I've uh, I've I've actually been uh, practicing. Uh, you know what we were talking about a couple weeks ago, and uh, um, yeah, things have been uh, things have been really good. The uh, my mood's been a lot better and a lot less stress. A lot less anxiety when you when you uh, just start really, really working on being in that moment right then and there, and in reminding yourself when you start to when me myself, I'll speak for myself. When I start feeling a certain way, anxious or uh, upset or angry, I I now it's become sort of a reflex to remind myself, uh, and it makes me feel better. It calms me down. 
Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. It's, uh, you're, you're, there's nothing. You're, you're not. You know, you're not in charge, and everything's happening the way it's supposed to happen. And let's uh, try. If if uh, if twelve of your peers were were watching you right now, would they think that w the way you're reacting is is a good way to react? And uh, yeah. Oh, outstanding. Well, I mean. Uh, Look, it takes practice, and you know, don't beat yourself up if uh, you get reimmersed. That's part of the fun. Um, the um, I, uh, I I found myself using a, a mechanism too that w when things got really stressful, I'd just simply say, "I love this game," and that would take me right back to the present. And realize that, hey, wait a minute, what I'm seeing is an illusion. It will, oh, you know, hey, this isn't this isn't as serious a, 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 as I'm making it. Uh, I'd use that. Now, King Solomon had one that he used all the time too, and and he had an inscription inside of his ring. And whenever things got really stressful for him, he'd take the ring off and read the inscription. And the inscription in the ring said, "This too will pass," meaning that what you're experiencing right now is fleeting. Whether it's a good at the moment or whether it's bad at the moment it, it it's like a river uh you wait 20 feet and you know the scenery changes so th yeah it, that's that that's very helpful and, and and when when you focus on the immediate moment you'll find that there's very very little immediate immediately threatening things occurring uh, you know, it, it's always when we worry about something's going to happen in the future, it, it's all hypothetical or, uh, you know, that that's where we or our thoughts, you know, uh, we start focusing we start on focusing. that. We, yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 that that's very useful. So I, I, I'm glad you're you're, you're getting, th uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going through that. It looks like me, myself and I is on. Uh, you got a microphone. Let's see if he it looks like he's it looks like up. Oh. I wrote. Yes, I have. Ah, OK. All right. Um, yeah, I, I recorded some of the stuff. We were. Uh, I was talking about the, you know, the concept of manifesting things. Uh, uh, I am recording it, so, uh, um, um, you know, so it'll be there. You, you know, uh, you can be as delightfully anonymous as you want. But yeah, th there was a lot of things that I was, that I was seeing, um, that was that was born out of not really applying some of the elements in the uh, cheat sheet. That, and these things are born out of the old way, the old paradigm uh, of thinking. So, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, if if you haven't heard, uh, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might just watch the video up to this point and, uh, and you know, see, uh, uh, see where I talked about some of that. Now, is there anything real pressing right now? Uh, one of the things that um, that sort of struck me is something about the mind you you had a post up here and th that's how i was going to remember remember it. let me see do you remember what you said about the mind let's see if i can find it you talk about meditation no you said something that there was something that you uh Let's see here. Powers of imagination, intent, energy involved to create something more permanent in astral worlds requires the use of imagination with as much will, intent, and focus as possible. Okay, that's, yeah, that's... The, the idea that we can, by force of will, manifest things is, is part of the illusion itself, okay? Um, things happen according to, uh, uh, you know, de uh, destiny, uh, meaning that these things are unfolding as part of a, a story that was already written. Uh, so uh, manifesting something... Um, it, 
you came here to experience something very specific to get very specific experience to experience lessons and to learn things that are very uh, very specific you're not in charge of the lesson or at least ego is not Okay, so you're going to get that lesson regardless. Uh, so th here, here's, you know, and, and one of the lessons I learned is stay away from law of attraction. Um, it, the odd thing was is the, the you know, I, I started reading some books and, you know, I, I started looking at it real closely. Uh, there was something that always bothered me about it. And, and you know, it, it makes uh, the the... the troubling thing about it is they do a pretty good job of selling it uh, however as you go through that whole law of attraction thing uh, towards the end they start talking about oh yeah yeah you can you can make things manifest but you you really don't want to do things that way well it would have been really nice to hear that on the front end uh, instead of actually having to go through you know uh, four or five books and you know all this time to, to find out, hey, wait a minute, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, you can make anything manifest that you want, but you really don't want to do that, which which to me is, is disingenuous, and, and, and it's really not, uh, it, you know, because, you know, here, here, here I am in a room with a bunch of people all with these intentions, and they're intending all of these other things, and, you know, I'm sitting here intending to, you know, intending them completely out of their wallets. Uh, so by my force of will, I can get all the money out of their wallets. Um, if that were the way things worked, um, then, you know, that's, uh, that's not a universe that, that I would be participating in <laughs> if they had that, that force of will. Because you can't, whenever you, you do these intentions, you got to understand the impacts of, 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 you know, if you had true true force of will um you you could uh, you you would deprive people uh, of the particular lessons and yourself of the lessons that you came here to uh uh to get i mean it, it's a nuance okay it, it's a nuance uh by all appearances it looks like we have control uh and, and intention may work uh, uh uh you know over and over and over again uh, but itself, you have to step back and look and say, hey, wait a minute, what is this teaching me? <coughs> if I am the one making decisions from an egoic perspective, then why why even bother with on at all? I mean, why why even bother with self uh, I itself? Why even why even why even uh, uh, why even maintain that at all? Uh, <coughs> there's no purpose in it. So, <coughs> because self is a pretty, uh, pretty well-known quantity, especially throughout history, and especially in my own personal history, uh, I, I know that there, the, the, the authority that is beyond this egoic experience exists. This self that's within me, uh, it, it doesn't listen to what ego is telling it what to do. I mean, he, uh, ego is a bystander here. It, it doesn't actively, it doesn't actively manifest a story for the character. Um, does that does that make sense? Yes, thank you, Rote. All right. So the and and you know here here it is. Um, it is one of those things that people have to resolve for themselves, and and they do that through, they do that through, uh, 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 you know, experimenting and and, and the life experience. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things like, uh, there's a lot of things out there. Well, you know, for instance, just traditional religion. You know, if traditional religion by itself. Uh, would allow you to re uh, reconnect with with the true you, the true being within you, then we wouldn't have we wouldn't need religion as it exists right now uh, at all, uh, because one everybody's problems would be solved, they'd be reconnected, they would be refused, uh, I, I mean you know fused back in and, and reconnected, uh, uh, and you know having a communal relationship with with the self, the the one one supreme being. And and you wouldn't need it at all. Um, that but you know you, you, one has to go through and find out. Hey, wait a minute. This is a dead end. 
Um, and, and there's a lot of dead ends in life. And, and, you know, we learn this by trying everything else where everything else doesn't work. Uh, and, and, but we have to know it doesn't work, you know. So, you know, a law of attraction is just, you know, and I saw when it came up and I thought, hmm. I don't know. Uh, and I, I started picking it apart, and uh, I had a problem with it. The first problem was it was at variance with the model, uh, and it was still arguing the same old ordinary thing, and that is things happen by luck, chance, accident, and chaos. And, and, and that's not a universe that uh, I'm in. Uh, things for me, especially since 2006, have been working according to, I've been on a rail. I mean, things have been proceeding, uh, 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 you know, in a, in a very organized way. Now, you know, as I move through it, no, I can't, you know, I, I, I don't know where I'm headed. But when I look back, I say, hey, well, you know, all of that stuff had to happen exactly the way it happened. So I can see the pattern there, but going forward, I'm not, I'm not capable of ruining my own surprise. Uh, so you know, as you go forward through time, no, you don't get to know how the story ends. Why? Because there'd be no point of you being in the story itself if you knew the story, uh, if you knew what the objective of, of the story was. You know, this is an interactive learning process. Okay, uh, th the thing that makes this learning process effective is that you learn you're learning things by experience, uh, and if that experience has an amount of suffering to it, uh, then you would avoid having the experience in the first place. But since gaining that experience and learning that lessons is so important, you don't get to know that, hey, wait a minute, yes, you're going to learn a lesson. That lesson's going to hurt because you're going to make that mistake. Uh, and you could say, hey, well, you know, I, uh, yeah, but I could, I, I would just choose to avoid the mistake. Yeah, um, yeah, you, you can choose that, but uh, you'll just make another one. Or, uh, you know, you, you can convince yourself that you've uh, uh, made that. But if you're here to learn lessons, like I am, uh, then you're not going to always understand while you're going through the lesson uh, what it is that you're actually learning. Uh, that comes, you know, that's the moral of the story. That that already uh, that always comes at the end after the story has trans uh, transpired, and you have a full historical view of what actually occurred while you're going in it. Uh, me, everybody else um, is blind. Then all of a sudden, when you figure it out, what it is that you're being taught, and when you actually internalize it, when you analyze it, and 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 you see uh, the value of the lesson. That's when you can say, "Hey, wait, that was that was awesome," but look, going forward, you, you can't know that. And 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 the whole thing is, the self is not going to uh, ruin its own surprise. So that that's just that that that's just one of those that's just one of those things. So, but law of attraction. Hey, if you if you wanna uh, if you wanna experiment with it, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, go ahead, knock yourself out. Um, you, you're not going to get. Uh, you're not going to get to the place uh, that they promise uh, because um, it doesn't work that way. So, uh, but you know, some people uh, aren't convinced, and they have to go through those uh, go through those motions. And uh, you know, it's just like. Uh, uh, you know, I can tell people, hey, you know, don't touch the red hot stove. And, you know, people don't believe me. Um, it's not until you touch the stove, you realize, hey, wait a minute. You know, OK, yeah, I should have listened. But look, I, I can't give you the feeling of touching the red hot stove without you touching the red hot stove. So if it's just a matter of uh, of just simply, you know, and, and I don't say, hey, uh, don't don't engage in law of attraction i just you know for me it just never uh, it, it just never it never worked as advertised uh and it wasn't because i didn't uh i i didn't know how to do it it just um you know to me it's it, it's the same thing as black magic you know certain incantations uh certain certain uh uh you know just by force of will even in large groups uh you know maybe you wear funny hats or you know you, you do certain traditional things over and over or ritualistic things and that's going to make certain things manifest it, uh, 
no. Why? Because, uh, look, self, unity, uh, the being, the singular authority, it runs the show. And and just because you're wearing a funny hat and, and are performing a ritual, it, it isn't, that's not what's making things happen. So uh, um, it, it also, uh, the biggest thing is, you know, one, there's uh, experimenting with the, uh, these sorts of things. Yeah, the, there's a lesson there. And when I say lesson... Uh, most useful lessons are always accompanied uh, uh, by uh, uh, an amount of uncomfortable experiences uh, and pain. Okay, uh, so uh, I I wouldn't tell anybody, hey, uh, you know, don't don't experience that lesson. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not out there, you know, trying to set people up for. Uh, you know, for pain uh, necessarily, but, you know, for some reason it isn't meaningful uh, to people until they experience it themselves. So I wouldn't be, I'd be the first one to say, hey, you know, if, if there is something that you want to try, try it. Uh, but pay attention to what you're doing and, and, and be, you know, uh, be honest enough when it doesn't work to say that and to know that, you know, if don't spend the rest of your lives, uh, you know, pretending that it's working when it's not. Uh, because you know the, the, that that'll just create more more pain and suffering. Uh, that that's one of the problems that we have. Uh, we adopt some, a, a philosophy or a religion or a set of principles or a logic a logic uh, train, and and it doesn't work. Yet we don't want to admit to ourselves that it's not working. We would rather pretend that it's working and make everybody else. Uh, out there, uh, uh, you know, think that it's working, and uh, uh, because we don't want to admit that, hey, you know, may maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I'm wrong, uh, and and it's really hard for ego to uh, to admit in a mistake like that, you know, and you know, e even in my case, even when I switched on in 2006, oh, that was, you know, thinking that, hey, I've arrived. <laughs> Are you kidding? I just got the kindergarten stuff out of the way. Okay. Oh, there were plenty of uh, there were plenty of uh, let's quote unquote mistakes that would follow that were uncomfortable. Um, were they necessary? Oh, absolutely. They were incredibly valuable to me, and and they hurt. The only difference between the time before and then is I embraced this. Okay, I embraced it. I experienced it. And it, it didn't carry with it the same kind of emotional trauma that it did in the times before. Uh, I mean, you know, some of the stuff, ha had I gone through it, uh, the stuff I went through in 2012, I, I mean, I, I couldn't have gone through it. Uh, I, I couldn't have done it. And and had I done that, uh, you know, even uh, uh, 10 years uh, before, uh, shoot, I, I'd be sitting in federal prison right now, um, you know, still. Um, because, because I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. And I would have reacted, uh, I would have re reacted from an emotional standpoint instead of looking at it as a, a, a as a constructive educational experience and, and just simply taking it in. I would have, uh, there would have been, uh, y you know, there would have been resistance. I, and, I, and, and the worst part of it was I wouldn't have been able to learn anything from the experience. And that's why it didn't occur at that time. That's why that timing was set up for it to occur then. And, and it made the entire uh, uh, experience that much more valuable and that much more meaningful to go through it at the time that I did. Uh, because then I had the tools to where I could truly understand what was happening. So um, does that was that helpful? I mean... Guys are quiet. Yes, now, uh, Rose, now thank um, you. how would you tie in like making contracts and all that into? I mean, maybe I'm overcomplicating it. Uh, but it, as far as not really. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Oh, your mic's still open. Oh, your mic. Uh, I'll I'll tell you. Um, the whole idea of contract is in unity is is actually an odd notion uh there's only one party and that one party uh, it just does it it doesn't have to make a deal with itself it, it's only egoically here at this level to uh, you know a contract is is a moot point in unity it, it doesn't it doesn't really exist 
Um, and, you know, look, everything that we're bound to here in this universe, and, and I use the word bound, uh, bind and bound uh, specifically because it, it relates to contract. Everything in this particular plane uh, uh, manifests according to a, a, a deal. Well, who made the deal? Well, the singular consciousness made the deal. Well, who did it make the deal with? Well, it made it with itself. So, therefore, you really couldn't talk to talk about it at, with respect to to a contract structure because it doesn't exist in unity. It's a one party contract. is is, is a non sequitur. Um, so, right. What we're talking about in this session is a little more is a little further deeper down in the peels of onion. Then. Right, right, but I, I've, I have some, I have follow-ons here. Um, so, so, what I find useful with respect to contract, all, all obligations are self-imposed. Okay, so it, it's useful to look at contracts from the perspective of. Where where did I agree to something, and am I holding myself to, uh, self to a contract that I'm not truly bound to, and and gotcha. right, so 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 that's where that becomes very useful. I mean, if you look at the Holy Grail law itself, uh, is it is it uh, is it actually making contract? No, it's actually undoing a contract. <coughs> but you can't undo a contract without knowing what a contract is. Because you agreed to something and you imposed this thing on yourself, uh, uh, by yourself, and, and, and it's an obligation that you're holding yourself to. Well, what happens when you just simply decide not to hold yourself to that? You know, so there, there's a, a degree of freedom that, that comes with that. Uh, you know, you might pretend that that other person, you've made a deal with that other person. Well, that other person is you. It's just a manifestation of, of the singular unity. If you want to define yourself as an egoic separate entity, well, yeah, you're at liberty to do that. But ultimately, uh, he and you are the same being. And if you look at it from that perspective, there is nothing that he can't obligate you to that you don't yourself obligate yourself to. Does that, does that help? Yes. All right. Hey, Roadhouse is here. Does his mic work? Let's see. Yeah, I think it is working. <laughs> yeah, it is to me. I can hear you. So. Yeah, sorry, guys. Just a little bit late from work. Yeah. Well, hey, I, I'm going to go ahead and terminate the, uh, the recording um, from this perspective because, quite frankly, I have to... Uh, I have to turn the air conditioning on <laughs> because it's been off for a while and man, it's getting warm in here. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the recording off uh, and then I'll, I'll be back here. Uh, I'll probably grab my phone so I can uh, uh, talk a little bit freer and then we can just have a, a more open jam session. But uh, ho hopefully uh, you, you folks that listen later, uh, hopefully this has been useful to you. I, I touched on a whole different thing, uh, a number of different things. But, uh, you know, of course, I, I did try to hold to the whole idea of uh, uh, the farce of will, meaning that, hey, yeah, you might have a will if from an egoic sense, but uh, it, it's just an illusion. Um, and the 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 quicker you you begin to realize that, and, and the the quicker you just sit back and and enjoy the show, um, the the more rewarding and more valuable the life experience will actually be for you. So okay, I'm going to go ahead. Just uh, give me a few moments of silence here, and then I'll be back. I, I just have to post the end credits, and then uh, uh, then I'll be back on. So hang on, just a second. Thank you, Roach. Oh hey, you're welcome. So let's see here. Let's get the end title up. All right, I'm Roach, and we will talk to you next week.